on this episode of Living the Dream. Captain Jimmy and Louisa travel to Buena Vista Beach Resort in Baja, Mexico. After perusing the resort, they go off-roading for a dip in an unlikely lagoon and a swim on a private beach. And the fishing turns out to be just as good as the sights. Oh, fish on, fish on! Got him! woo Nice yellow fin! This is Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson. Presented by Salt Life. Live Salty. Doesn't get any better than Baja. This is awesome. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, boy! That's a kingfish right there! Woo! We flew from Florida to Cabo, Mexico, and once in Mexico, we jumped in a van and took a 45 minute van ride north into the Sea of Cortez, where Hotel Buena Vista Beach Resort is located. The ride from Cabo to East Cape is a really cool ride because you see a lot of neat things on the way over. We saw some cows on the side of the road that were just kind of like wild roaming around on their own. We also ran into a bunch of wild horses which was really cool because we never see that kind of stuff in Florida. Hotel Buena Vista Beach Resort is one of my favorite places to go in the world. I absolutely love it there. It's just such a great group of people that are there and not just the people, but the location is excellent. They have an amazing pool. They have an amazing beach right out front, which is really nice. I would go in the water almost every day after I got done fishing and just take a dip to cool off. Jimmy and Louisa decide to spend their first night in Mexico settling in at the resort and soaking in the sights. The next morning, they rise with the sun and hit the water for some inshore fishing. After loading up with bait, we went to a spot where the captain said we should be able to find some rooster fish. He was right, it didn't take very long after I had those baits in the water and I had a rooster fish hooked up. Got him. We got a double here, I think, Louise. A whole school of them came through. Little babies, little baby roosters. Look, he's skiing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna let him in the water. <laughs> we might need smaller bait, guys. Look at this, you ever seen a rooster fish ski? This guy's going water skiing here. It wasn't a very big one. I was just kind of reeling it across the surface, the water. I didn't give him a chance to get in the water. Oh, he's jumped. <laughs> Whoop. There he is. And that's what we're out here for, except we're going to want them a little bigger. And as you can see, they got a little mackerel here. We call those Boston mackerel where we're from in Florida. And I'm going to have to get a good hold on this guy here to get that hook out. It's in there good. Let me give him a dunk in the live well. Keep him fresh. It's nice when you have a fish small enough you can just drop them in the live well to keep them alive. Just a little mini rooster fish, but it was still a rooster fish, so it was a good way to start. All right, well, there's the rooster fish I just caught. That circle hook actually destroyed his mouth there and hit a piece of his gill. That's the problem with circle hooks. If they do get in the gill, they don't come out easy like a J hook does, so we're going to do our best to get them released and have them swim off good. There he goes. All right. He made it. He just got a little injured gill, but he should be all right. He's swimming good. You can see him right there in that clear water swimming off. Very nice. Shortly after releasing that rooster fish, Louisa ended up hooking into something that was fighting much harder. Had to be a bigger fish. That's a nice fish, Jimmy. Good Woo! job. Keep Welcome it up. Welcome to Mexico. Come on, out of your way, you got a good one. Woo! All right, Cap. Come on over here. You got a we'll good switch. one. Good job. Thank you. Finally got one big enough to take the bait down, huh? Yeah. All right. That's exciting. Can't wait to see what it is. Right. Hopefully it's a big rooster fish. Good fish. Good fish. Oh, oh it's a tuna. tuna. <laughs> Woo, that's Yellow even better. Tuna. We weren't more than, I don't know, 50, 100 yards from land when we hooked that tuna. It's not every day that you can catch yellowfin tuna inshore when you're fishing for rooster fish. All right. Good fish, Louisa. 
Nice fish! Well, I guess that's a bycatch when you're fishing for uh, rooster fish out here. We got the stern of the boat fishing, uh, facing towards the middle of the ocean, but right, right over here, we're about 300 yards from land. Yeah. And that's one plenty big enough to eat right oh, there. Oh yeah, I can't wait. All right, I thought we were catching and releasing everything today, but we'll bring this one home to eat it. That's one of the cool things about fishing in Baja is that you can catch inshore and offshore fish while you're fishing inshore. Very good. All right, well, I'm gonna pull this out and see if he stays still for me. See this circle hook here? Look at that. I didn't even twist it. Did you guys see that? I, I, I just touched it and it fell out of his mouth. That's why you always keep pressure on the line. That was there an awesome is. surprise. I mean, I love rooster fish, but who doesn't love yellowfin tuna, right? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Good job, Louisa. Yeah. That's why he was pulling so hard. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Besides the rooster fish and the tuna, we also caught several trigger fish that first day. That's the Ozuri mag minnow. It's the long cast mag minnow. Didn't expect that, but you know what? These guys kill your bait too, so I'm glad we got them and they make incredible ceviche, so that's what we plan on doing with them. This is the trigger. No matter how hard you pull, no matter what you do, that will not go down at all unless you hit the trigger and go straight down. Well, they call it a trigger fish. It just locks into place. Live in the dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life, Live Salty, Angle Coolers, the original high performance cooler, Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck, ACR Electronics, the science of survival, and by American Fishing Wire. One of the things that you can do while you're at Hotel Buena Vista Beach Resort is you can rent four-wheelers while you're there. So you can take them and ride down the beach and go fishing, or you can take them through town. You can go check out the desert. They have some waterfalls not too far away that you can go check out. So we were taking the ATVs down that dried up riverbed and we had like big mountains on either side of us and we're just kind of cruising along. Beautiful scenery, stuff that we never see in Florida. The further we got and the closer we got to the waterfalls, we eventually started seeing some water trickling down the middle of that riverbed. So after riding on those four wheelers for about 20 minutes, we came up to the place where Felipe said that there was a waterfall on the left hand side. So we kind of parked the ATVs. We walked for maybe, I don't know, 100 yards or so. On the way to the waterfall. And sure enough, there was a waterfall coming right over the top of the cliff down into this big pool of water, but the water really doesn't go anywhere after that. It just dries up. It doesn't have enough strength to keep pushing all the way to the ocean, so it only makes it a few hundred yards before it's completely soaked up into the ground. So after checking that waterfall out a little bit, we got back on the four wheelers and started heading to the second waterfall. As soon as we were pulling up to the area, we started getting some little sprinkles and the rain started coming, so we didn't stay very long at that second waterfall, but it seemed to be a little bit bigger. It kind of cut its way through the mountains a little more. So to avoid the rain, we got back on the four wheelers and started heading back towards the beach where it was nice and sunny. The ride to the beach, in my opinion, was pretty amazing. We were just winding through these dirt roads where there really wasn't hardly any other traffic at all. So after going about another six or eight miles, we come to the spot where the beach was where Felipe said that we should pull off the road and park the ATVs and kind of set up camp for a few hours and go swimming. Louisa's always the first one in the water. I wasn't even out of the four-wheeler yet and getting ready and she's already down there unloading and about to jump in. So after taking a quick dip there, we got back on the ATVs and headed back to the resort. With daylight to spare, 
Jimmy and Louisa soak in Buena Vista Beach Resort poolside and wait out the sunset. The next day they hit the water with Felipe, one of the owners of the resort, for some inshore fishing. Knowing that we only had a couple hours of fish this day because of the rain that was coming in, we decided to stay really close and just do some jigging for jacks and to drop some live bait to the bottom in case we could pick up a big snapper or something. First bait that I dropped to the bottom, I got hit and it was a pretty good fish. I thought it was a snapper at first, but I wasn't really sure. All right, fish on. Don't know what I got, this one's coming off the bottom. Oh, there it goes. All right. Woo! That's giving me a little bit of a pull. While I was fighting that fish up, Felipe hooked into another fish on the Palomar jig. The setup I'm using too is a 65 pound braid down to a 60 pound Yozuri top knot leader and a 5 0 hook. And the rod and reel combo is an Ocean Max 9 and a Max L Platinum Series jigging rod. So we got plenty of backbone for these fish. And I got color right there. There he is, oh, it's a big one, it's a jack. It's a big old jack. Actually, it's a pink jack. I've caught these quite a few times in Costa Rica and Panama. Ah, there it is, whoo! And that's a pink jack. It's a little different than the Almaco jacks, and uh, they don't actually have amber jacks here, they only have Almaco jacks. The Almaco jacks are gray, and they have a really long fin that comes out here. As you can see, this is very pink. It's one of the best tasting jacks that you'll catch out here. We pulled them up off the bottom, as you can see, with a sinker in 400 feet of water. Woo! What a way to start the day. And as I always say, if you're gonna catch a jack, do it at the beginning of the day because they will wear you down. Look at those pretty colors on them. You won't see those in the States. Stay tuned for more Living the Dream after these messages. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by CNH Lures. Be a winner with CNH Lures. Plantation on Crystal River, the place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. Yozuri, fish the best. Cayman Islands Angling Club, come experience sport fishing in paradise. And by Tsunami, awesome tackle. Captain Jimmy and Louisa are in Baja, Mexico at the Buena Vista Beach Resort. A storm approaches, so the crew sticks close to the shore to fish for jacks. And Jimmy has just hooked into a fortune jack, also known as a pink jack. Got that guy in the boat and Felipe pulled in that white tuna or striped bonita at the same time. Immediately after throwing that other jack in the Ingle cooler, I got hooked up right away. I mean, that bait wasn't on the bottom two seconds, and I had another fish coming up. Fish on! Might have another one. We might be in a big school of jacks. Seems to be pretty fired up right now. Ugh. Even though there's no sun this morning, I sure am sweating. Yep, another jack. The pink jacks fight like your typical amberjack would fight. They're a very strong fish. They're a jack, so they will fight from top to bottom. Not quite as big as the last one. This is more the typical size that you'll see the pink jacks. Real pretty fish, man. It's gonna be nice to get into a bunch of these because they are fantastic to eat. One of the best tasting jacks, like I was saying. And they're actually in the rudderfish family, like the banded rudderfish that we have in Florida and the Caribbean and uh, things like that. Very, very similar fish, just no stripes on them in a pink tent. So Louisa's jigging on the left side of the boat. I'm fishing on the bottom on the other side of the boat. And then I hear her say fish on, and now she's hooked up with the Palomar jig. Woo! What we're doing here, we're dropping our Palomar jig all the way to the bottom and just jigging on the bottom because that's where all the fish are. So we don't have to jig it all the way to the top. I see some blue. What do we have here? She gets it closer to the boat and it's another striped bonita. Good job. They're coming in one after another, aren't they? Oh, yes. <laughs> With the storm overhead, the crew heads back to shore to wait out the rain. Come next morning, the skies have cleared and Jimmy and Louisa are right back at it. 
Oh, fish on, fish on. Got him. Woo! <laughs> we were just in the process of putting the second line out and I'm already hooked up. Oh, they're coming out of water right behind us. This is insane. What I'm fishing with right here is an Ocean Max 10 by Maxell and the Maxell Platinum Series jigging rod, which we're not doing jigging right now, but it's a fantastic rod for tuna because it's very lightweight. You can fight a bunch of large fish in on it in the same day without it really wearing you down. And it's rated for 135 pound class, so it's a really tough rod. It wasn't a huge tuna, but you know what? It was a fun size tuna to catch, and I love catching tuna that size. It's not too small where you're just gonna throw it back or use it for bait, and it's not too big where you're gonna break your back for an hour and a half reeling it in. They're a really fun size tuna to start the day off with. There it is. All right. <laughs> Good job. We'll bring him over here for the camera to see. Look at that, you see that? Gaffed it, pulled it in the boat. You see that hook anymore? It's out that easy. As soon as that thing felt a little bit of release from the pressure, the hook fell right out of his mouth. Not a real big tuna, but still a great size to eat. Wonderful start to the day. The tuna were biting good, but so were the jacks, and a school at Jack Revals moved in and interrupted our tuna fishing. Got him! Woohoo! Man, two in a row! Golly! This is taking no time at all. After I caught and released that jack, Louisa ended up hooking into a jack instead of a tuna, so we were sitting in a school of jacks. Woo! The sun is shining and the fish are biting. Stay tuned for more Living the Dream after these messages. Jimmy and Louisa rose early this morning and hit the water for tuna and jacks. Their captain takes them just a few miles offshore and before the crew could drop all of the lines, the fish were off. Got him. Welcome to Hotel Buena Vista Beach in Baja, Mexico. Woo! After messing around with some jacks, Louisa ended up getting another tuna bite. Oh, I got a fish. Fish on. Smaller tuna are a lot of fun as well because you can reel them in one after another without breaking your back like you do on a bigger tuna. Good morning workout. Fish is staying down. This is definitely a bigger fish oh, than the man. other one, for sure. And it's fighting hard, just the way I like it. Nice fish. Nice yellow fin. There you go. Not where I wanted to stick him, but that'll work. Good fight. Look at that hook right in the top of his lip. Yeah. Wow. Hung in there good. Gosh, that's a hard spot to hook him. There it goes. <laughs> good job, Louisa. Thank you. Not a bad fish. Yeah. We're in a school of little footballs here. Yeah, catching yellowfin to the inshore. Heavier than he looks. <laughs> oh, yeah. After throwing that yellow fin on ice, a school of Bonita moved in. So Jimmy and the crew decide to relocate in search of more tuna. So we moved a little bit and uh, Louisa got a hit on the spinning rod. She wasn't really sure what it was at first because it was kind of a lighter hit. How's it feel? Feels good. Definitely not a bonita because it's not like spinning like a bonita everywhere. You got a little bigger, huh? Yeah, staying down, but it's not doing much. Now he's running, 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 no stop. It was a constant back and forth battle with Louisa on this fish. Feels like he's getting tired. I'm getting more line now. And then the fish would wear down and slow down a little bit and she would pull it back to her. And then it would start running again. 
Whatever it is, it's big. <laughs> well, it seems like the fish is a little bit tired. Now, it's time for me to gain some line. Oh my gosh, it's a big tuna. <gasps> there it is. This has to be my biggest tuna on light tackle ever. 30 pound Yozuri top knot leader. This is just incredible. So close. I mean, my heart was beating so fast when I saw that tuna. Woo! I see it, I see it, I see it. That's a big yellowfin tuna made in Mexico. Lift now, lift, 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 lift. That's what she was fighting all that time. Woo! What a monster! Louisa! Oh my gosh. Put a hurting on him. We got it on the Tsunami 6000 Shield Reel. Pure muscle right here. Yep. Pure muscle. And only 30 pound Yozuri Top Knot leader. If you notice the teeth in this fish's mouth right here, check these teeth out. One scrape of that leader across those teeth. Pop, broken. The leader was stuck in the corner of his mouth so there's no teeth. Perfect. So all we had to do was handle the weight of that fish and that's what we ended up with right there. Exactly what we came for. <laughs> Do not made in Mexico. Exactly. For more fishing and diving action, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Captain Jimmy Nelson. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson was brought to you by Salt Life. Live salty.